Ciao Smartis, hello everyone. We are live with our special guest, our known, our well-known personality, Dr. Evangelos Katsiolis, which is one of the most intelligent people in the world and a former holder of the title of the highest measured adult IQ globally. If you are enjoying this, please uh, like the video if you like it, uh, and uh, please give the video a like, of course, and subscribe to Evangelos uh, uh, channel. You can uh, expand the box in the description uh, below and uh, click the link, of course. So uh, we have uh, 12 uh, uh, people uh, <laughs> at the moment, but... Uh, Welcome, everybody. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they will... Uh, this nightmare, uh, I hope, will, uh, will rise. Um, Evangelos, could you please introduce yourself uh, to our uh, Italian audience? This channel often uh, explores uh, topics like uh, logics, uh, logic giftedness, uh, and also psychometric aspects of uh, range IQ tests. So I'm sure they'd love uh, to hear more about you and uh, your uh, projects, uh, your idea on... Uh, uh, on uh, a <laughs> uh, broad uh, range of aspects, uh, including uh, life uh, and our uh, personal uh, self-assessment, I don't know. First of all, Marco, thank you very much for the invite, which took me five years to accept, to be honest. <laughs> However, yeah. here I am. Uh, I'm happy to have a chat with you and happy to communicate with your audience. Uh, I'm uh, a Greek psychiatrist, psychotherapist, life coach, and I'm the founder of a couple of societies, a bit more than a couple, to be honest, and a global community, World Intelligence Network, which was found in 2000, uh, 24 years ago. And uh, th this uh, global community is a hosting environment for high IQ societies which practically make me one person who is uh, deeply involved in high IQ uh, communities. Um, I'm interested in uh, assessing abilities and actually I'm even more interested in uh, taking advantage of abilities. That's my main aim, to be honest. So um, I've taken a couple of tests myself and uh, had some pretty fine scores. Uh, which made reference to some media at times, especially in the past. And uh, based on uh, my special interest on intelligence and IQ testing, I met a lot of people and among these people, here you are. Yep, I remember the WIND project, uh, you also introduced it uh, in uh, the conference in, uh, 2000, uh, in uh, 2012 in Dubai. July, Dubai, it's also nice to see. <laughs> and, um, we took some fine pictures then. Yeah, 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 we have some pictures of that uh, meeting. So uh, you were also the, um, you won also the um, uh, GOTI award in uh, 2013, if I'm not getting wrong, the first time they held the, the award. So. Yes, I was honored to accept this award. It's, uh, it's an honor for me. It's like a recognition of my participation in the high IQ community. However, it's not when we talk about IQ and high IQ and uh, special abilities and intelligence and uh, appreciation of intelligence, uh, actually, we don't talk about awards and prizes. We talk about uh, a very ground ability that we need to use in order to improve our lives. That's the main task, the, ma the main goal. And that's my, um, uh, that's what I have in mind, actually, how to take advantage of any ability I may have and how to, to make people uh, improve their own lives ba based on their own abilities. <clears throat> so actually, yes, I, I received that award, but that's not the big thing in my life. Yep, I'm sure. Um, anyway, let's come back to the uh, W A um, N uh, the Win project. So uh, this is an umbrella an umbrella organization that uh, put together some different many different high uh, Q societies uh, from different uh, with different uh, cutoffs. Uh, of course, uh, uh, how do you have had this idea, and uh, are you enjoying still enjoying the project? Well, Marco, uh, thanks for the question. It's, it's an interesting question, and I hope the answer is interesting too. 
Uh, I was thinking back in 2000 that uh, we need a hosting environment, uh, a supportive environment for people with abilities, for interested people with abilities to offer their abilities, offer their uh, potentials uh, to, to benefit humanity, to benefit other people, to find solutions, to help finding some answers to some uh, general or more specific questions. And that was the main idea, actually, how to gather people with abilities, how to create and which way to create a, a hosting, a proper hosting environment for people to exhibit their abilities and take advantage of them for the benefit of, of any other and also for themselves. Okay, this is a little embarrassing, but I have to say that um, you are recognized uh, from your achievements in both uh, supervised and uh, also high-end architects, of course. And uh, your broad expertise spans fields from uh, psychiatry to information technology, I've read, and also philosophy. Uh, you have been featured in numerous media outlets discussing uh, in about intelligence. And uh, so my question is, uh, can you briefly try to explain the, which is the difference between high IQ intelligence and the genius, if uh, that's any in your uh, opinion? It's hard, an hard question. Uh, another question, I know. Well, the question is about a difference. The, the thing yeah. is, is there any difference at all? Uh, a person who is named, who is titled as genius, apparently affords some abilities. One major ability that a, a person who is named genius uh, has is intelligence. Intelligence is the potential to uh, of, of, um, applying some analytical skills, uh, excessive thinking, uh, thinking and uh, conceptualizing behind what is obvious, understanding, crit uh, um, offering some um, criticizing what is going on and taking taking decisions and actually finding proper solutions. Well, this is a, a set of skills which is, um, which is actually a descriptive definition of what intelligence is. Um, so, so in my thinking, a person who is genius uh, or a person who is named genius, a person who has exceptional cognitive abilities, has uh, uh, needs this person to 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 be uh, to to have an assessment in intelligence to actually have a practical application of intelligence, which actually gives some results, gives something um, makes a difference, yeah. which is the important thing. So practically, there is no difference between between these terms. I, the term IQ is um, let's let's say a few things about IQ. IQ is a psychometric tool. Yeah. It's something, it's an inventory. Uh, psychologists, um, apparently one century ago, developed this tool in order to be able to be in a position to assess uh, raw intelligence. Uh, to be honest, a, a smart person, an intelligent person is quite obvious to be understood by anyone. He's a person who is finding solutions, a person who most likely uh, serves other people or serves uh, himself as a leader or as a person who takes decisions, who finds solutions. That, that's the kind of person who has abilities. However, if the, the science of psychology needed an instrument, needed uh, an inventory. That's why they developed IQ. And we are talking I, I, about uh, beneath and not getting wrong. Then uh, Catherine Cox tried to estimate also the IQ of different uh, genius, but this is uh, quite uh, up in a ball, uh, maybe. But uh, the first tool, uh, if I'm not getting wrong, uh, was uh, by Binet, Alfred Binet. So they have uh, a step yes. for Binet scale also, deviation uh, 16. And it's one of the most recognized scales, by the way, still in use, to be honest. So, uh, so the thing is that uh, IQ is a human made instrument, intelligence is an ability we have, and Zinus is the person who has this ability. Um, uh, there are different comments, but I can't read uh, all of them uh, in real time. Anyway, yeah, it's Greek, of course. <laughs> anyway, so you prefer to use uh, standard deviation of 16 rather than a Wexel scale? Uh, I have the... Uh... Understood. Actually, the most common in, uh, deviation in use is the, the 15 one, yep. the Wessler scale, 
that's the, as far as I come across a lot of uh, people who are um, sending me their reports in order to apply in some of my societies or they ask for some advice, most of them have results using this scale, this scale the, the Wessler scale, yeah, which is yeah. a scale which uses the 15 uh, points. However, the Binet scale, the Stanford Binet scale with the 16 points is also very popular and also let us mentioned the cattle scale, which is the 24 scale, yeah. which is also quite in use, but not, not that much popular as the others. Maybe this is interesting uh, when we are uh, considering a ratio IQ uh, for children, so we can make the, the comparison between uh, the, the current age, the real age, and the potential uh, compared to um, mental age uh, compared to... Uh, compared to um, to the, the real age. So. Marco, that's a very interesting point. And uh, we need to make it clear. Just, just allow me a couple of, uh, one minute, a couple of minutes to, to explain the, the major difference between the child IQ and the adult IQ. The yeah. child IQ is a, is a ratio, a ratio of the mental age to the physical Chronolo age. Chronological age, sorry. Exactly, know. exactly. It's, it's, a fra it's a fraction. Yeah. It's a fraction of uh, of the me medal, uh, the medal age of uh, the, the child and the actual age of the child to the actual age of the child. The adult IQ uh, uh, has a totally different definition. It's actually the um, the rarity, how rare is an individual's performance in the general population, which is a totally different definition. So practically, when we give uh, when, when an individual has an IQ of let's say 120, that means that uh, the, this uh, this specific individual have scored in a specific intelligence uh, assessment um, 20 points uh, above the mean. The mean is uh, in inside IQ, both inside IQ and uh, adult IQ, uh, the 100, well known to to everybody, I think. Well, an, an individual, an adult individual who scored 120, scored 20 points above the mean, which uh, given the Gauss distribution, normal distribution, expected distribution of the results, uh, this means that um, if we use um, a, devi a deviation of 15, that's a bit above of, the, of one deviation. Uh, if we use a deviation of 16, that's also a bit above the one deviation with this specific performance. If we use a deviation of 24, that's a bit lower than one deviation above the mean. That's the interpretation of the specific score for, uh, for an adult. If a child scores 120, that means that his, uh, the child's mental age is 1.2 times more than his actual chronological physical age. Which means that if the child is five years old, five years old, based on the specific IQ, he, uh, the specific IQ, his medal age is six years old. You understand it's a totally different concept and we need to make it clear because uh, in many lists around the world, many people uh, refer to child IQ and then they include in the specific same list adult IQ performances, which is a totally different concept. So it's actually a mess. If someone knows the difference, it's actually a mess uh, finding these lists and uh, having mixed results, mixed entries with adult uh, performances and uh, child performances, just to make it clear. And thanks for the question, actually. It's, it's a pretty yeah. interesting one. You're welcome. Uh, this is a strange comment. Uh... Is this a sponsored contract? No, no. <laughs> it's just a stream yard which allows us to, to stream for free. That's all. Uh, then uh, just let me try to read. Oh, Pinko Pallino, hi. Uh, he said, how far are we from understanding how exactly the brain works? In its superior faculties, uh, intelligence, memory, and creativity. And this, uh, this uh, leads uh, us to our next question. I have another question, uh, which is uh, on a related note. I recently asked it to ChatGPT 4.0 to estimate uh, its own IQ based on its uh, theoretical performance on the multiple choice pattern recognition tasks. It responded that uh, it could. Uh, achieve an IQ, score, an IQ score of over 200. 
I really can say why it says this, uh, he, he is uh, it, uh, I don't know. Um, ranging, uh, anyway, 200, ranking uh, among the top 0.001% uh, of people. I directly ask this, uh, uh, take a sample of uh, 100 uh, uh, random uh, adult uh, people and selected people, how do you rank among them in a multiple choice uh, test? And uh, it's a, it answer, uh, answer that uh, it uh, would rank uh, on the top of, of uh, any human being. So uh, while uh, I think that me, uh, this may be uh, an overly generous uh, self-assessment, <laughs> this is my, just my opinion, it's still remarkable how quickly AI has uh, advanced in areas like, areas like uh, mathematics, uh, um, logic, reasoning, uh, and even coding. I tried it uh, with the Python coding, uh, and uh, that's the case. So have you had uh, a chance to test uh, AI yourself? And the second question is, um, what's your opinion on its current uh, capabilities, uh, if you have uh, figured it out, uh, how is uh, going on? Well, let me start my uh, my statement, my, my answer to such a question, uh, saying that I'm not an expert. I'm not an AI expert, and I'm not considering myself not even an AI expert, an intelligence expert. I'm just a person who exhibited some interest in taking some tests. I'm also um, focused and uh, specialized in mental health. Uh, that's my professional um, uh, involvement. So actually, I'm, I'm not uh, very much into uh, the academics or the research of AI. Uh, that, that's point number one. Secondly, um, I consider that uh, th we are developing. Okay, that, that's, that, that's something that no one can deny that. Um, we are developing fast. We have developed a, a very um, a, a very effective tool, which is um, a, uh, the, the artificial part of uh, developing intelligence. And uh, practically, this intelligence can uh, can uh, give us answers, can uh, conceptualize, can analyze, uh, even at times even better than many of our, many, many of, of us. That, that's that's quite a fact today. The thing is that uh, we don't have any ground rules. We don't have any um, any any limits, any boundaries. How far this development can uh, can go, and and how we can actually take advantage of these developments instead of uh, at one time in the future uh, having to face or having to fight with machines or uh, like in some very popular mo movies science fiction movies, uh, we, we are developing something that it, that it is very powerful. That, that's a fact. Scanet However, is coming. So, yeah, scanet. it's like Matrix or whatever else. I mean, there are plenty of movies and plenty of creators who uh, try to approach uh, such an imagination at that point of time. However, in our days, it's not really imagination. It's something that it is, uh, it is, uh, it's alive. It is, it is live. It, it is, it is open and run. Uh, open and running for the time being. So we, we need to, to raise some specific boundaries, some specif specific rules, some, some ways, some means to control this power. As you can understand, this uh, we are talking about power. And if this power, uh, if, if a specific individual, let's say, uh, imagine any, any random human being could handle and could uh, direct and could take advantage, could take use of this power, to go against other people or to, to go against humanity or even to destroy our civilization, at some point of time in the future, this may be even possible. So how can we protect ourselves from uh, what we are currently developing in order to benefit ourselves? I think Actually, we, that, we need to think in advance. About I think that in Europe, uh, we are uh, quite good at regulation if compared with different uh, countries or... Uh, or systems, uh, but um, so you are Greek and uh, you should uh, agree with this, I, I hope. And uh, how do you think that we are uh, we are moving in this uh, complex field since uh, we cannot block uh, something in a country and uh, let it run uh, all over the world? I remember that in Italy, we have uh, blocked ChatGPT for a while and uh, it doesn't be, be good and uh, we went nowhere, so. So which is the... Marco, I think the thing is not to uh, to block the progress. 
or to to create any any kind of obstacles in such a process. The thing is how to um, how to to manage it, how to direct it, and how to develop it in a safe way, in a safe in a safe context. Yeah. How, how um, um, an authority? How I'm not talking about governments or some, some specific individuals who could be in charge. I'm talking as humanity. How we can take advantage of something very powerful that we are currently developing. That's the thing. And in terms of the question, yes. We are in a process that we uh, AI and uh, the current science uh, developments come very close to um, um, to analyze and understand as much as never before uh, how our memory works, how our imagination works, how our mind works. However, we are still in a process. And I think it, it's gonna it, it, it was gonna be more uh, uh, optimistic than actual to say that we achieved that we haven't achieved that yet but we are very close yeah this is uh, this led <laughs> us to my next question uh, which is about also about uh, iq but um, obviously we are uh, considering uh, the ai pro related problems so um what are your thoughts uh, on the current uh, reliability of uh, range IQ tests, uh, especially those that are um, unsupervised, uh, most of them are unsupervised, and without uh, time limitations. Uh, so we are considering the classical uh, high range IQ tests. Uh, and so in the age of uh, AI like uh, G uh, chat GPT, so specifically, do you think uh, their reliability has been affected since the public release of uh, ChatGPT uh, 4.0 version, especially. And, and in general, uh, after November 2022, when uh, ChatGPT was released uh, to, to everybody, to the, the public. So it's a uh, That's a nice question, by the way. Thanks for, for asking such a question. Uh, as I told you, I'm running a couple of societies. And um, I'm, I'm in the field of, um, of high IQ communities for, for many years, for more than two decades, to be honest. So um, it's an every day, and let's say not, not it's an every day. Um, I, I, every few days, I'm receiving letters, emails from people uh, letting me know that some uh, other, uh, another individual or another group of individuals have uh, compromised specific tests using AI, using uh, discussion uh, chats and uh, forums uh, around the world from specific countries or worldwide. And uh, I'm, I'm getting all these emails that uh, people have compromised everything, almost everything. The thing is that uh, it's very easy in our days to make a rather deep uh, search in uh, using AI or uh, asking AI to solve specific items or uh, take uh, in advance, even before you anyone is taking a test, downloading the test, finding the test somewhere in the internet or ordering the test. Uh, pe people offer uh, supervised tests uh, around the world um, to, to be purchased by, by anyone, not a, not a specialized one, not a psychologist, this one, not, not a supervising authority. However, anyone can buy any test. Anyone uh, can. Let, uh, let me just say that uh, uh, me, together with uh, Gaetano Morelli, another uh, recognized uh, IQ personality, uh, wrote and published uh, in uh, a paper. Uh, in, I can remember the exact year. I mean, I think uh, around uh, 2013 or 14, um, which is uh, about this issue, maybe later. Anyway, uh, we we show that uh, the, this um, this fact actually occurs. Uh, so there are people uh, uh, which are buying and selling uh, supervised IQ tests on uh, on eBay, if I'm not getting wrong. Uh, it's on. Uh, uh, educational research, uh, this, uh, this paper, is available. And eBay is the white web. There is also the dark uh, web. Yeah, uh, we we, we just don't even talk about dark web, however, it's there. there. i never been uh, on... Me uh, neither, uh, me neither, but, but there is. Yeah. So, so at the time, we released the, the beta version of... Uh, I don't know if... Uh, we talked about this at the time. Anyway, we, re we released the numerical version of the first uh, dynamic equality normed IQ tests, 
but uh, it was uh, a very, very hard test. So uh, random people cannot uh, achieve a positive score uh, usually. Only uh, very few people uh, were able to, to score uh, one or two uh, as a rough score in that test. So it's uh, not, uh, not uh, useful for practical uh, purposes. And for compromises. However, if it's very hard, if a test is very hard, you understand that uh, this test can never be very popular. I read uh, a lot of uh, hating uh, comments, uh, all related, uh, talking about uh, English, uh, speaking English and so on. But uh, are you understanding uh, the, the topics and the meaning of the live? Uh, I'm just uh, talking with this uh, random fake accounts uh, on the chat, uh, you know, you have a lot of hating and uh, I'm sure you you also are uh, facing this uh, this problem of the on the web. So just uh, I want to, uh, to to spend so your spare time, I, I mean, ju just uh, ju just uh, click close the video and uh, go outside, uh, go play on the IOA. So that's no problem for me, but uh, please, uh, Leave the chat for people uh, who are interested in uh, this ca kind of com conversation. Sorry, but... Marco, sorry to interrupt, but you can never control that. <laughs> no matter how polite, how kind you are, how many times you will say the same thing, you can, <laughs> you can never control that. You know that better than, than myself, so it's okay. Uh, this, uh, this is a funny... Uh, comment uh, in, in Italian, but I can translate. Anonimo uh, three na uh, double nine uh, asks you which is your IQ. So we have just put it in the, the title. But <laughs> well, if I'm I'm willing to give an answer about my current IQ, I can I'm in no position to give an answer because I haven't been tested myself now or recently. Uh, many many years ago. When I was taking uh, quite a lot of tests, because I was very eager to, to see my limits, uh, the maximum performance I could achieve at that point of time, so we talk about uh, 2002, 2003, 2004, but I, I think I stopped taking any tests uh, since and the last time I took one was in 2004. So back then, 20 years ago, my highest performance was, uh, was quite high. Uh, it was a performance of uh, almost uh, 200, 198, in a, using a standard deviation of 15, which is 6.66 standard deviations above the mean. Which means that uh, this performance, as we said before a while, we are talking about an adult performance. It's uh, an estimation of uh, the rarity of a performance among the general population. That's the interpretation. That's the definition. So 6.66 uh, standard deviations above the mean means that it's a performance that can be met by very few people among many billions. Yeah. On a few different galaxies, uh, of course. Yeah, let's, let's, let's include let's Mars or the fact they whatever leash, else. But, yeah. uh, um, uh, we are not, there are no doubts that uh, it's a very, very high uh, score. Including um, all the humans in the solar system. Yeah, at least. Uh, Laura Mecchi asks, uh, or said, may I ask, ask, asks, uh, may I ask if, uh, just uh, let me enlarge the, the screen, if, uh, is it in principle possible to account for the intelligence faculty with an uh, observable quantity uh, which has not uh, only on uh, order relation uh, like IQ? I can't... Uh, I can't understand. I'm trying to understand myself. Yeah, it's uh, it's not so easy. Intelligence faculty. Is it if IQ? Is it the question if IQ is the only means to understand intelligence or to give an estimation and a mathematical estimation of how how much intelligent someone is? Yeah, but maybe maybe we can uh, transpose the um, the question and uh, ask to ourselves at least uh, the the problem of defining uh, cautiousness, uh, which is uh, maybe a very very difficult tasks, uh, and uh, nobody has even uh, 
uh, be able to to define the consciousness so uh, if we can uh, um, i can just uh, try to to formulate uh, a question which is uh, do you think we will ever be able to truly define what consciousness is uh, and then uh, could you share your personal understanding or a description of what consciousness means for you um, without uh, cheating the works by Perrault or so, which is uh, quite hard to, to be explained, uh, I think. In, um, in a video. Marco, let me first ask, before, before I try to answer, let me first ask, what do we mean by consciousness? Uh, uh, knowing that uh, we are... Uh, we are uh, what we are, uh, so I got it. I got it. Elvis uh, inside uh, the environment uh, and in the I got it. I got it. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. Uh, well, um, actually, it's the perception, it's the realization and acceptance that someone is alive. First of all, it's the consciousness of living, of being alive. So practically, we need the living being being able and having the abilities to realize that the specific uh, there is a specific existence in us. We are alive ourselves. So uh, we need a functional mind, a functional body, uh, which, which both host a functional mind. Uh, the, the soul, the psyche, uh, all the mental abilities are based on, uh, on functional bodies. That's how we perceive soul in our times. We need a functional body in order to be in any position to exhibit and uh, um, conceive uh, anything in terms of uh, how we feel, how we think, uh, in order to think, in order to develop any, any mental uh, quality. We need a functional body. That, that's the, the thing. So, practically, uh, if we are talking now about living beings, about humans, consciousness varies a lot among people. Um, you know, it's a, it's a matter which is very culturally uh, affected and culturally uh, there are some many cultural interferences there. It's in different, cult in different what, what cultures, is consciousness during, uh, is defined differently. During our lifetime uh, and also during the day. So when we are sleeping, our consciousness... Uh... Slow down. Yes, it, it takes a break. It's a break. Yeah, <laughs> when we get uh, but, when we go to sleep. Um, however, it, it's actually the, a matter of alertness. How alert someone can be, and actually, it's a, a perception of uh, of existence, our own existence, and that's our own consciousness. In terms now of how someone develops uh, his own uh, their own ethical code. Uh, their own uh, direction in life, their own rights and wrongs, which also all of all of these aspects, all, all of them have to do with that, their own, uh, their own um, the specific individual's own definition of uh, what life is and how they perceive themselves in their own lives. Uh, you, you, we may understand when, when we give such a definition that uh, it's a very subjective term how anyone and how different people may perceive how th their own consciousness, th their own ability and their own perception of their own existence. It varies a lot, to be honest, and uh, it's very difficult to offer a, a generalized and common definition uh, suitable and appropriate for, for all of us. Unfortunately, I have to say that uh, this is a little flame, but I can't uh, avoid to show you that uh, somebody is pretending to be yourself. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a, a, an account uh, which uh, I'm reading. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a Hello, everybody. I'm uh, OK. This uh, is uh, a Hello. very Hello. Lovely, and, uh, and the best thing. I think uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh, embarrassing uh, for uh, People don't bother, are... Marco. Don't bother at all. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A laugh uh, and uh, and it's all. So another uh, important question. Uh, this is uh, quite <laughs> quite uh, long uh, to be to be read. But uh, what is uh, your philosophy of life? You are a life coach, of course. Do you believe we are meant to follow a, a specific mission, uh, or it's the purpose of life simply to live? Uh, personally, I think our collective consciousness, so we are uh, just uh, 
a link into the previous uh, question. Um, so I think our collective consciousness, uh, which is how aware we are uh, as a, a whole species, as a human beings, uh, continues to evolve uh, from time to time uh, with uh, occasional pauses and uh, slowdowns. This isn't uh, about uh, a divine mission. Uh, I am, I am not believing in any god, but rather an evolutionary process that connects all of us, made of stardust. Uh, we are, uh, we are made of stardust, <laughs> like uh, a famous quotation. And uh, in uh, this mystery universe, we don't know anything basically. So this is uh, quite hard to to ask you, uh, which is your uh, personal vision of uh, our life. Well, Marco, thanks for the question. It's an interesting one. Well, I don't think that uh, there is any specific uh, uh, divine meaning in life or any uh, special reason that we live. Uh, it's a development. It's a, it's a natural miracle, to be honest, that we are alive. Um, nature made uh, its own tricks and we are alive and who have been developed. And actually, I perceive life as an opportunity, as a chance, as, as our own chance to gain as much safety as we want and as much satisfaction as we want and as much meaning as we want. And we define our safety, our satisfaction and our own, me our, our own life meaning. So actually, well, I'm talking about a personalization of uh, how we will uh, take advantage of an opportunity. And temporary, a temporary opportunity. It's a temporary opportunity. That, that's my definition of life. We yeah, have been I... given a temporary opportunity. And we need, if, if we can understand that, if, if we perceive so, if, if we think so, then if we agree with what I'm saying, we need to take advantage of it. The thing is that uh, we have been living our own lives in terms of how we came to be alive today. We have been in different periods, living our lives in, uh, and facing specific issues of uh, specific people, uh, having specific experiences. We gathered all these experiences and we have uh, given them uh, our own interpretations. We understood what we understood from whatever we lived so far. And that's the main difficulty in life, how we can deal with our past when we need to live our present. That's the yeah. difficult issue. I, I think Stephen Hawking uh, would uh, have uh, agreed with you since uh, you also said that uh, our life is uh, a very big chance that we need to get in order to, to live it. So there are uh, some different comments. I haven't... Um, so I, I don't know which uh, which comments to to alight, but uh, there are some stupid questions and and comments. But I think this is uh, interesting and uh, curated. Uh, I can give, uh, of course, my personal answer, but uh, but it's quite long. So the problem is that uh, IQ ranking doesn't reflect uh, the real uh, IQ of. Uh, of people uh, listed there, for example, my Q on the origins directory doesn't reflect uh, reflect uh, uh, anyway my real like you, which is uh, uh, very uh, it's not not so high uh, in any case. So I, I don't think that this is uh, a true uh, a good uh, a good way to to evaluate uh, people. Uh, People, uh, cognitive performances uh, or uh, skills or abilities. Anyway, it's just uh, uh, useful for uh, knowing each other and uh, meet uh, some people with a common interests or so. So uh, I Michael, think that you... my level of IQ is uh, very, very higher than mine, uh, no doubt. Will you allow me to make a comment on that? Of course, sure. Well, I've noticed after 20, more than 20 years uh, dealing with uh, high IQ achievers and uh, being a part, being a member in high IQ communities that there are plenty of people who are taking IQ tests. They are trying their best to achieve the most they can. And that's a very useful for them present in the middle of their own lives where a lot of other things are missing. 
a lot of other things, a lot of other aspects, a lot of other choices, a lot of satisfaction, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, of their own needs are not met, are not uh, satisfied, and these specific people are very um, uh, obsessed to achieve the highest possible score in order to uh, to to um, to show to themselves, so to, to exhibit to themselves, to to give back to themselves that uh, there is something glorious going on with themselves. When in the on the other hand they may be missing a lot and they yeah. may be not happy at all they may be not satisfied at all they may be uh, missing even a position and um, um, so something going on in their own lives that they may be missing almost everything however a nice iq a nice number a big number give them some kind of happiness some kind of, of recognition and actually some kind of alibi that uh, just because they are so smart they shouldn't compromise, they shouldn't uh, say yes to what other people are saying yes at. Uh, they shouldn't agree, they should disagree all the time, they should do different things, they should be, dif uh, be different, uh, be differentiated than any norm, than any uh, anyone around them. So actually, a high IQ at some times may be the reason that some people uh, do not um, uh, do not come into groups, do not form groups, do not form relationships, do not uh, claim what they want in their own lives. It may well be and it may well stand as, a, um, um, as an argument that some people will not try to achieve the most in their own lives. And that's not a good thing about IQ. That, that's actually misery. That, uh, that's a very unfortunate use of a high achievement, of a high score. Maybe However, it's very common. A, maybe taking a, a very big number of uh, IQ tests is mm, turns also into an uh, addictive uh, hobby or uh, activity. So you you just uh, keep trying uh, and uh, taking new tests in order to improve your score on some kind of ranking, but this isn't uh, useful nor uh, you are uh, pushing uh, up your intelligence. Uh, it's just uh, a way to to try to be satisfied with yourself uh, when, uh, when you aren't uh, so good at uh, doing other things or maybe using that uh, great potential, uh, putting it into mathematics or uh, writing a novel, I don't know, doing something good for, for others. Marco, I agree with you, but I wasn't referring to the person who is uh, enjoying himself taking tests or enjoying the, their own time taking any kind of test or challenging themselves with any new test or um, uh, it's, it's a new experience anyway. I was talking about people who are missing a lot and they, they are uh, redirecting their own, um, uh, they, they are prioritizing and they are only evaluating and uh, uh, giving high importance in taking another test or a subsequent test in order to increase their own scores because that's that's all about them. It's totally different. If I'm not getting wrong, Pinco Pallino is a physician, a PhD in uh, physics. Mm -hmm. Can you confirm, uh, uh, my friend? So, if uh, if so, I think that this comment is quite uh, valuable. It's worth reading. It. So, thank you for the elaborate answer. I agree, which is a uh, very nice uh, accomplishment. Anyway, uh, different uh, questions. Uh, just let me check. Mm. Okay, I think this uh, is, a, is a real uh, question, not a troll, uh, a troll question by some hater. Uh, so achieving a high IQ score could prevent some people from improving their flows because uh, it, it will make them, uh, um, it's the world's uh, fault uh, since they are so smart. Mm. That's what we are talking about. That, that's the big thing. Uh, it's like they give themselves, uh, they recognize, they, they, they accept, they, they understand themselves or they want to understand themselves as being different and as being in a higher position, in a higher rank, uh, having exceptional abilities, having uh, the potential uh, to be understood as, um, as very capable However, these specific individuals may take a different direction in their own lives and may do not take part in any 
uh, interaction with other human beings. They may avoid uh, discussing and liaising with other people and uh, trying to find solutions, trying to form groups and form teams and uh, find answers. Just because they are different, just because they are capable, just because they give themselves, as we said just before a while, an alibi that they have a paper, they have a number to show to themselves that they are different and they are uh, um, better, better in some something way. special. Not only different, but better. This is the, the most... Uh, so they won't part. bother, I'm sorry to interrupt, they won't bother to, to interact with someone with a lower IQ yeah, or they, someone they, they can't who is not that smart. Since I am so smart, they can't yeah. understand what I am saying. And, uh, that's, that, that's a curse, by the way, that's yeah, a curse. It's, uh, it's quite uh, risky. Simon Gerber, uh, do you think an holistic outlook uh, on life uh, is positive or negative? Uh, I think it's a consequence of, <laughs> of this kind of uh, situations, but I... I prefer to leave to Evangelos. Uh, the if, it, if it is a nihilistic one, how could it be positive? Yep. Dante Terribile said that, uh, re recognized that uh, these are, these are uh, trolls, uh, troll factory trying to put with me everywhere on the web. Anyway, that's all. Uh, have a nice time <laughs> to, to them. Uh, Different comments, uh, very crazy math pistols. Answer, I think that, okay, this is uh, quite long. Talent Center, hi. I am very happy that uh, you, you can find some time to follow us. Do you see IQ in such a way that uh, in a far future, it could be possible to test IQ with this, uh, with uh, DVST, DVST uh, being passive? Uh, meaning, just observing uh, the brain of the TST from outside. Oh, okay, understand. With some kind of uh, of a tool uh, to measure uh, their um, their IQ, like uh, uh, blood pressure, pressure or so. Uh, so you are as far to... as we develop further tools, and as far as science um, make more discoveries. So, uh, so practically, when we establish. Uh, when we have established a level of understanding uh, about our mind functions that we can relate architecture, uh, relate anatomical architecture and uh, functionality based on anatomical architecture, we can relate this to specific abilities, including intelligence, then uh, at that point of time, we, we won't be, uh, it won't be necessary for anyone to take any test. We will have some, um, will possibly take a, a, a developed PET scan or something like that. And we will have established an understanding at a very close estimate of our abilities. This is another question from Simon, uh, which is for you, obviously. <laughs> the higher the self image, the higher rise risk of uh, isolation. Uh, this is the question. Question mark. Because uh, the outer world uh, can potentially refute. Uh, that self idea. I, I think so. It uh, comes to my mind uh, the uh, the song by Simon and Garfunkel, which is uh, quite similar to your uh, name. Uh, I am an island, a rock, a rock island, uh, and I'm carrying uh, nobody. I have my books, my poetry, and uh, that's uh, quite sad. But uh, I can't. Uh, I, I don't know if you if you ever. Uh, Heard that song? It's by Paul Simon and, uh, and Garfunkel. Uh, I can't remember. I think the I haven't. The, the Rock or uh, uh, the Island. I, I can't remember the title, the, the, but uh, I remember the song. You, you said me later. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, uh, regarding the specific question, uh, it came to my mind as soon as I read the question uh, the, the definition, the scientific definition of what a narcissist is. What is a narcissist? It's a person with an uh, inflated ego image, inflated perception of about his own self, their own selves. Uh, and that, that, that's not the, the only about the narcissism. Uh, in th this inflated self-ego uh, and uh, perception of, uh, of uh, their own selves comes uh, uh, fo following uh, prior trauma. A prior, a prior uh, lower perception of their own selves, and uh, there is a reactive in uh, inflation of uh, how they perceive themselves. 
So let's say that someone uh, scores high on a high IQ test. If that person needs a kind of argument, a kind of uh, a number, it's, uh, when we talk about IQs, we are talking about numbers. So practically, who can um, object a number? A number is a number. We need to accept it. It's, uh, Marco can confirm that. It's uh, the, the power of numbers. So there is a number confirming that this person is exceptional. This person is uh, is the best. This person is uh, is the, the the smartest among the among any anyone uh, any other around them. If this person uh, develops a, a high self image, or if this person needs a high self image, sometimes following a specific lower self image uh, that this person may had in the uh, may have in the past have had in the past. We can understand that psychologically, this person may need a high IQ in order to establish an understanding of themselves among others. And probably having such a, an understanding about who, uh, about uh, their own selves, it's very difficult to interact with anyone else. It's very difficult to, to relate to anyone. It's very difficult to, uh, to share anything with anything, uh, anyone else. Actually, they are in a position to demand obedience and uh, demand that other people will uh, be submissive towards them. Here that's, is because a... the, that's because they want that. Here is an hint for us. What do you think about IQ societies created to solve more applied problems? Uh, so giving uh, some kind of focus uh, to uh, give an IQ society in order to, to try to, to solve a real life problem or, or so. Which is, uh, I like quite... the idea a lot. That, that, that's the reason that um, I found some societies, as I told you many decades ago. That's the concept. Uh, and, I th and I think that, that's the point. That's a crucial point. And that's the only point of gathering people who have exceptional abilities. The, the thing is not to, to give them a label, to give them a title, to, uh, to, give, them, to, give, uh, to give them some award or something else. It's... Uh, to gather all of them and uh, the the group potential, the group dynamics there, the the group uh, the abilities of uh, any group member will contribute to to achieving a specific goal, to to helping, to to finding a solution, to doing something practical. Anteo Niteo, Nieto, sorry, um, says uh, good evening, uh, good evening to you. Uh, what do you think about failure? Uh, uh, our relationship with uh, with failure uh, relation, <laughs> in particular, the right mentality to make the best of such situations. So, winners and losers, uh, is it really important, uh, or uh, we have to develop some kind of uh, uh, of skills uh, to to face failure? Uh, or so I think. Actually, I am very fond of failure. Um, I like failure a lot. As soon as I understand for myself that uh, apparently for any reason, and I need to investigate the reason, I just failed. That's a very important uh, understanding. That's a very important outcome. When we need to evaluate where we are, uh, how, how, uh, how we approach our current choices, how we can develop further our, uh, our own position in our own lives, how we can improve our functionality and our outcomes. Failure and success is actually different sides of the same coin, if we can say that. When we yeah. try something, we expose ourselves to two random um, uh, outcomes. Uh, we can either succeed something, whatever we have in mind, or, or we can fail. If we fail, Having made uh, having made a specific choice, that's a that's a very important, a very valuable lesson for us. And if we if we accept this lesson instead of uh, accusing ourselves or uh, feeling um, feeling low or uh, be, be, being very strict towards ourselves, if we accept that the specific choice is the reason of for our failure, then we have the the option. We have the, um, uh, the opportunity to uh, reevaluate the choice, reevaluate the way, the pathway towards achieving the specific thing we have in mind. Actually, we need to uh, we need to accept our failures. When failures are, are valuable, by the way, 
because they they, uh, they, um, they give us valuable information about our um, our way towards our our happiness, our success, our uh, towards our the life that we want to live. Failures show us the way. I can't uh, agree more with you. This is the last last Gracias. question. <laughs> of course, uh, by Tommaso Rossi. Hello, could you explain how an IQ person lives uh, uh, lives a standard day uh, and which are the differences uh, with an average IQ person? Uh, for example, going to a bar for breakfast uh, and so on. So this is quite broad, uh, broad question for you. I don't think there are differences or if there are differences, then we, we are talking about a person who wants to pretend uh, who wants to exhibit a, a set of differences for the sake of differences. And we need to investigate it a bit further why this person needs to behave in a different way. A person with high abilities, a person with a high IQ, and now we directly relate high IQ with high intelligence. Sometimes a person who have achieved a high IQ is not really very intelligent. It's a person who technically or practically uh, or using um, any, any, any other, uh, sometimes even illegal ways, have given correct answers to an IQ test. That's not in all cases, a person who is intelligent. And uh, on the, on with, a, with a proper subset of the, the whole set, which is intelligent. As we said before, before a while, someone can purchase, can, can buy the answers and can give them answers and can have a high IQ. That doesn't really make him an intelligent person. Worst and on case, the other hand... Worst case scenario, but uh, it's real. So it's not just... Uh, on the other hand, any, del- any intelligent person is not ha- has not, by default, have taken any uh, an IQ test already. No, not all intelligent people around the world have taken IQ tests. So pra- practically we are uh, facing and we are dealing every day with intelligent people who have never taken any IQ test. However, they may be, they may be even more intelligent than the ones they took a test. Just to have that in mind. So I was, to- I was trying to answer the question that uh, living differently doesn't, uh, is, is not really related to a high IQ. It's a matter of choice. It actually serves some specific needs from the side of the specific individual. The specific individual wants to be different and having a high IQ may be the reason that uh, the ground that this person um, uh, accepts, accepts it and uh, wants to, to behave and live in a different way. Actually, it gives him, it gives him, uh, a high IQ gives the reason for, uh, to serve the specific person's need to be different. Laura Mecchi again uh, asks you uh, for you. Um, I was wondering uh, if it's possible to determine a certain unit of uh, measurement of uh, intelligence to be assigned uh, to quantity to quantify it. So the problem of uh, properly measure uh, intelligence, but I think that uh, we have uh, the problem to properly define uh, which is intelligence. Uh, so this problem uh, is an issue uh, an issue that uh, comes before. Uh, the, the real uh, aspect of measuring uh, intelligence. When we refer to intelligence, we, uh, we uh, actually is, mean... Yeah, but which is a, a, a true definition of intelligence. It uh, can be so broad that uh, we can't, uh, we can't really... Person... Uh, the, the camera was... Uh, well, okay, we are back. <laughs> so you you are uh, frozen and uh, can't uh, can't understand if you we are uh, uh, we are okay with uh, with your uh, camera. Anyway, uh, I think that uh, there are just uh, two trolls uh, on the chat uh, and we are uh, uh, approaching the one hour of um, live streaming. So I think it's uh, it's good to to end uh, this interesting and fascinating live. And uh, it's been a pleasure uh, for me having us with uh, having you with us. And I wish you all the best. And uh, see you soon uh, on the web on the World Intelligence Network. Uh, I don't know. The... Marco, thank you very much for this great opportunity. First of all, to see you, to talk to you, and yeah. then communicate with your audience. Thank you very much for your initiative. I really appreciate that. And uh, by all means, we can arrange that again whenever you want. Me too, me too.
Thank you very much. And uh, of course, uh, the video will be available also on, on your channel, I think. So thank you. People can uh, can That's watch great. it again uh, still uh, here on, on your channel, uh, leaving a like and uh, subscribing both our channels. Thank you. Uh, you wish. Ciao, Smartis. Uh, see you and uh, stop. Bye bye.